one of the first innovators of the American century, changed the course of history with one amazing idea. From Detroit to Silicon Valley, Ford is driving the automobile into the future. As we spend a couple of days in San Francisco, it's worth remembering that it's not just pure technology companies that have a presence out here. In fact, there are a whole host of companies that you wouldn't normally associate with Silicon Valley that are bulking up their technological capabilities. Case in point, Ford Motor. It's currently working on all sorts of new tech for its cars, from connected vehicles to the Internet of Things to autonomous driving capabilities. Ford stock has been trading sideways of late, as investors worry that the auto cycle is peaking here in the United States. And while I, too, am very concerned about near-term headwinds, something we'll address later, the future is exciting, especially when we get through whatever pause we might be experiencing. Now, today we got a chance to check in with Mark Fields, Ford Motors president and CEO at the company's Silicon Valley Lab, to find out more about the future of the auto industry. Take a look. Mark. A few years ago, we went to River Rouge, saw the F-150 be made, and I would say you are an auto company. But now I think that you're a mobility company because I look at what I see here. Tell me about the change. Well, we're on this uh, fantastic transition of going from an auto to an auto and mobility company, which means you know keeping our core business of designing and developing vehicles very, very strong, and we're absolutely going to do that. But at the same time, these emerging opportunities around mobility services is a huge opportunity for us, and uh, that's what we're, uh, we're focusing on. we got to change the word huge because we got to figure out. I don't think people realize how much bigger one market that you don't have any share in, and you're uh, abject about that, versus another that you have 6% in. The other one's bigger, the one you have zero. How big could it be for Ford? Well, when you look at transportation services, taxis, ride sharing, those type of things, it's a $5.4 trillion business around the world. We literally, as well as our competitors, get none of that. That's huge opportunity on top of our core business. Uh, there seems to be some sort of a mental blockage into thinking what cars can be like, except for when I'm out here. People think about cars very different. We think about cars going A to B, not out here. It's different. Well, out here, it's a combination of things. Clearly, there's more congestion out here. So, you know, for us, in terms of mobility and helping people out here, it's not just about getting people from point A to point B. Right. It's about, for us, it's about human progress. It's, it's really about uh, the ability to allow people to live, play, and work where they want. And that's what it's all about out here. And the play is really important because people really relate to their vehicles out here as well. Do we speak too uh, much about driverless or autonomous? Is that a, a prevailing theme, or is that just or is that narrow? Uh, no, it's a, it's a prevailing theme. When you yeah. think about it, it's, it's, it has a lot of societal impacts, right? Think about a day where you can significantly reduce congestion and accidents, and in some cases, it's about quality of life in some parts of the world, access to food and health care. But at the same time, there'll be a, a large portion of people that will continue to want to drive the way they have. Why do people uh, resist this notion of driverless when we've had an increase in fatalities for the first time? The guys from Travelers have shared me a data because of texting. There are people who are reckless, and we could save a huge number of lives. To me, it would seem to be an imperative of every government in, in the world. Well, I think you're seeing a lot of uh, governments and cities around the world really talking about how do they get smart cities? How do they incorporate different modes of transportation, including autonomous, to, uh, to improve the quality, not only the quality of life of their residents, but it's also an economic development issue for a lot of these cities to allow people and goods to get around. Uh, and we want to be part of that, and that's why we are partnering with cities, and we want to partner with cities, rather than just doing business in their boundaries, help them solve some of the mobility problems. Well, let's talk about partnering, because I, I think that Ford, you, you know my daughter has a Ford. It's oh, yeah. the early sync, okay? Sync is, was the first. Uh, do you think that Sync can go it alone, or, or do you need to, you can partner with anyone? Do you need to partner with anyone? Well, Sync is the, the world's most popular entertainment and communication system, and we're going to build on it. We're on Sync 3 now. We have 15 million Sync-equipped vehicles around the world. It's going to grow to over 40 by the end of the decade. But we've always been open to working with others, uh, and, and that's why we're out here in Silicon right. Valley. Uh, some things we'll do on our own. Others will work with, uh, with other companies to make people's lives better, but also provide business opportunities. Well, is it a space race? I mean, Amazon may be doing it, or Apple doing it, or Google, or is it a community, and we all want the best car? 
Well, it's our, our approach is uh, provide options for folks. Okay. I mean, we're working with Amazon. Uh, we'll, show, uh, we'll show a little bit of demonstration in okay. terms of what we're doing with them. Because, again, it's around making people's lives better. How do we enable that and offer a business opportunity for us? And sometimes it'll be on our own. Other times it'll be working with others. Or make our lives better by uh, hitting what button or what uh, artificial intelligence does it know when I'm pulling up to my house. Tell me how my life will be made easier in the, in the Ford, the Ford of the future. Well, think, think about this as you're going forward in the future. Think about just as you're driving down the highway, and usually when you have to get service for a vehicle, a light comes on on yeah. your instrument panel, and you have to make an appointment, et cetera. Think about as you're driving down, and the car will actually sense that and talk to you and say, you need to have your brakes change. Would you like me to make a, uh, an appointment with your dealer, and they'll interface with your Google or iOS calendar, and it'll be done for you? Or whether you're coming home, and gosh, you have to have that roast started. Think about your vehicle, which is probably the biggest thing on your connected devices, right. and you'll be able to start your oven, put your lights on in the house, shut the security system down. It's about making people more productive. All right, you said it, the first thing you said was, look, you, got, you can't lose your core. Uh, this costs a lot of money to be doing it. You've got a kind of a parallel company. You've got Ford Smart Mobility LLC, uh, is that compatible with what we saw at River Rouge? Absolutely, because again, we're thinking about the core business, okay. right? You got to have great vehicles. But the reason we uh, created this subsidiary, uh, the Ford Smart Mobility subsidiary, is because we want them solely focused on uh, focusing on uh, mobility services and that side of it. We have the, the core, the product one down. Now it gives us an opportunity to have them solely focused on the services side, of the, the mobility services side. Of it. Well, which part of, of what you're out here and we're looking at is the turn off for you right now? What are you most excited about? Because I know every time you come here, you learn and it's different. Well, th what I'm most excited about here is the innovation that's going okay. on. I mean, the innovation is who we are as a business, going back to Henry Ford. When you look at this office, I mean, we have over 130 professionals in here, researchers, engineers, data scientists, and they're working on really cool things, advanced sensors, voice recognition, um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things that, are, that will allow us, I think, to grow our business, but also really push us further in making people's lives better and using technology in an intuitive way. It's very energizing. All right, so uh, I'm driving in Brooklyn, looking for a parking spot, have to drive many times around. The spot's usually a little bit too small for me to be able to figure out how to get in. What will my life be like if I buy a Ford three years from now or five years from now versus, what I, versus the half hour I just lost in my life? Well, we're working on smart parking. We're doing a number of mobility experiments uh, around the world in different cities. And one of them, the vehicles, our vehicles have sensors on them. So when somebody is looking for a parking spot, they're, all the Ford vehicles are connected to a cloud. A customer will be able to know, gee, there's, you're most likely to get a spot on Avenue A versus Avenue D. And therefore, you save a lot of time. But also in most cities, 30% of the wasted fuel is people looking for spots. Is that true? Absolutely. So how do we be part of the solution, this mobility solution for customers, make the world better, and offer us a business opportunity? And, uh, partner, in, I, I've not been to China, okay? But I have to imagine, I know because a lot of the gasoline causes a lot of the bad air. Your relations with some of the cities there? Well, we have a, a huge manufacturing facility in the Chongqing area. It's mm -hmm. a city of 30 million vehicle, uh, 30 million people, one of the biggest cities in the world. And we're working on a lot of mobility experiments there. And, and there it's a little bit, they're probably ahead of the curve on some of the, the, these mobility solutions because it's a little bit of uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of congestion, a lot of air pollution. And we're saying to ourselves, how can we be part of the solution for them? Uh, I know that you seem to be doing more in Europe. I've read your Barcelona speech. Uh, each country different for what you're trying to do, or are they all just experiment, experimentation labs, so to speak? Well, there's, it, 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 it's a little bit different by country, but the reason we do the experimentation is to learn. You know, we've been, we've been doing these experiments since uh, a year and a half ago, the beginning of 2015, on journey planning, on ride sharing, on smart parking. And we're learning a lot, not only around how do we uh, fill a market need? What's the unmet need for the customer? But what's the business model in there for us to be able to earn a good return on that? We'll be back with more with Ford Motor President and CEO Mark Fields. 
Now, uh, we know that Tesla's in the news. Uh, we, we don't hear about Ford necessarily at, with electric, but you're much bigger than people think. Absolutely, and, and Jim, you know, we're not in a race to make announcements. We're in a race to do what's best for the You're customer. You're not going to go buy a, a, so, a company that puts solar panels on We're Listen, <laughs> them soon, right? You're not our do combination is an auto and a mobility company, and we think that makes a lot of sense for us. But we're not in a race to make announcements. We're really in a race to do what's right for our customers and right for our business. And you will see, we've, we've done a number of things, but you will see over time our strategy come out and elements, and we'll make announcements that fit within that strategy. Okay, so uh, we know that people don't get driver's licenses as early as they used to. We know that because of Uber, there are uh, other ways that we don't want to, so we can't have student loans, student loans, so I can't buy a car. These all are part of what it seems like that you have, and I, I couldn't believe this, you have anthropologists and, and sociologists on, on your team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, first off, it's really important to look at trends, societal right. trends, because those will tell you what is the world going to look like 10, 15, 20 years from now. And then we rewind back to today and say, what are the strategies we need to put in place to allow us to succeed in that time frame? And one of the things we're doing is we're taking very much an approach, what we call design thinking, to our products and our services, which is really around not only design and engineering methodologies, but using uh, 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 social tools, things of that nature, insights from the business world, because we want our team thinking about experiences first, and then what is the hardware and software and technology that helps deliver that in a very human and accessible way. But that's expensive. It's expensive. This is not like lightweighting the F-150. I mean, these people cost a lot of money. You're competing against Facebook to get these people. You're competing against Apple. How do you get them? How do you attract them? How do you keep them? Well, you need to, the, the people, young people particularly want to make their dent on the universe. Okay. They want meaningful work. And what more meaningful work than helping change the way the world moves? You look at this office. Right. We have 65% of this office are millennials. 20% of them have PhDs. 40% of them have, have, have advanced degrees. I mean, they want to make their dent on the universe and look at, what, look at the product or look at the service and say, I did that. Do people uh, who uh, that you deal with, are, are, is Uber changing their lives so therefore you've got to be doing something with Uber, be thinking about doing that or the equivalent? Because GM did Lyft, so I know that they're thinking about it too. Well, we're doing, as we said, a lot of experimentation on ride sharing and car sharing and the journey planning, and we're learning a lot around that. Uh, to your point, in some, some cities going forward in the future, you could see the private use of vehicles outlawed. So we're thinking about how do we provide, what's the unmet need out there? How can we play a part in that and allow people to be mobile? And in some cases, we'll do it on our own. In other cases, we may say, make sense to partner. Well, let's talk about the outlaw, because there are countries now which you're talking about where it can't have fossil fuel cars in a certain point. Are you ready for that? Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're a leader in electrified vehicles. Here in the U.S., for example, we're, we're, we're the sales leader for plug-in hybrids. And we're going to be investing between now and the end of 2020. 40% of our nameplates around the world are going to be electrified. We view that as part of the future, and we're working towards that. Okay. Uh, the Ford's been around for a long time. Uh, is, it, uh, is it positive or negative in the sense that one of the things that I hear about from Tesla is there's no baggage. They don't have the baggage of Ford. Is it really baggage? We have a terrific brand around the world. Okay. Henry Ford and the Ford Oval is known around the world. And our brand has always been known for innovation and progress. That is a huge asset. And it's, it's, it's having a heritage. Heritage is a huge advantage if you use it right. And heritage to me is history with a future versus just a history. Now you mentioned about the press release, okay, the Model 3. So my other daughter doesn't have the Ford. She says, Dad, I want a Model 3. Uh, and I tell her, get in line. I mean, people, people aren't lining up. For what? For the press release of the next Ford yet? How do you do that? Well, you look at uh, you, you look at our new Mustang around the world. I just well, came back around no, the world. That's, that is the lineup. I, and, and and we just came back from Le Mans, and uh, have lots of people asking for GTs and things of that nature. And you won. Uh, we won, which was a great accomplishment by the team, and again helps our brand. Right. Again, that gets back to the heritage issue. We won 50 years ago. We won now. It's a company that that sets winning aspirations and provides technology to do it. But, you know, overall, when you look at our electrification plans uh, going forward, we're, as I said, we're a leader today, and we're going to be a leader going forward 
and making sure that we provide products that people want. When I hear you talk about manufacturing technology information, I'm wondering whether the whole, uh, let's say, um, the whole stumbling block to understanding Ford the stock, which you know I have to do, is this notion of peak. I don't hear anything that is cyclical about what you're talking about. I hear secular and I hear demand that is not going to be necessarily responsive to uh, employment, which I know you told me is really mm -hmm. the key and uh, value of houses, but you're talking about something that would transcend the concept peak. Well, absolutely. When you think about mobility services, you know, people have to get around. And if you think about our core business, which does tend to be cyclical, if you think about these mobility services, if we do it right, it's, it's a little bit less sensitive to the business cycles, uh, more recurring revenue in an ongoing basis, and that's why we're really pursuing the, these, these, these mobility services. We think it's a great complement to our core business. All right, now, uh, your core business, we've got to talk about it. Uh, the I actual, love talking about our core I business. I know you do. The actual market, and I, because of the way you report, I need you to break it down by region because mm -hmm. you're the most transparent per region. What's going up, what's flat, what's not where you want it. Well, when you look at North America, we're operating at benchmark levels versus the competition. But what we're seeing in the marketplace, we're going to have a strong year. Right. Uh, we, we, we've said that. But we're starting to see some things in the marketplace that we hadn't anticipated last year or even the first quarter. And this is what, credit related or just a... It's real in the areas in, in, the, in, the, in the areas here in the U.S. on uh, that we're dealing with the expanded Takata recall, which right. we that did was, not anticipate. That's more than a million... That so you it's, a, it's a lot of vehicles uh, that we have to take care of for cons consumers. Uh, we're seeing, you know, auction values across the industry. Uh, come down. That I saw the CarMax numbers. They were disappointing. That impacts our residuals. Right. So those are impacting us. Uh, and listen, we're still going to have a strong year, but as usual, we'll provide uh, updated guidance at our second quarter earnings call. Moving on to Europe. Yeah. Uh, Europe is continuing to improve right. modestly. Our business, importantly, is back to profitability. Our market share is growing. Consumers are really uh, reacting positively to our new products there. Moving on to China, we are seeing uh, that we didn't see the end of last year or the first quarter. We're seeing, you know, more margin pressure uh, yeah, in the marketplace. Yeah, but you're still, I mean, you've had a couple of good months. We've had a couple of good months, right. but, you know, it, it's a very competitive market. There's over 100 OEMs, 100 yeah, car makers. Yeah, friend Phil LeBeau's got a, a great advertisement where he talks about the notion that that's where innovation, yeah. and so if you have 100, that's a real, that's a dogfight. Exactly, and, and we're seeing that play out in some of the margin pressure we're seeing. And then Latin America, it's just still, huh? Uh, it's still very, very weak down there. But, you know, our view is that it should bottom maybe by the end of this year. Okay. You're seeing Argentina take the right structural reform right. actions. And hopefully we'll see Brazil as, uh, as they, uh, their new government gets up and running taking the same actions. But it's very tough down there right uh, now. Can share be taken because of what we see here? Oh, a absolutely. I mean, it, it all comes down to do you have compelling product? And again, product that makes people go, wow, right. it makes my life easier. But also at the same time, this whole new element of these mobility services where we can actually touch people and get them exposed to the Ford brand, even if they were never going to own a car. Okay, and it has not hurt lower gasoline prices by the cars and trucks that you make more money on. Well, when you look at the, the marketplace right now in the industry, you know, the, the industry is at a record level. Right, we can't forget that. We can't, can't forget that. that. I mean, the, people put a question mark, oh my gosh, are you yeah. a peak? It's at a record level. Put that into perspective. And then when you look at, you know, our strength on SUVs and trucks, right. well, consumers are moving that way. That's a benefit to us. All right, excellent. Let's leave it at that. I like that note. Thank you, Mark Fields, President and CEO of the Ford Motor Company. Thanks, Jim. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.